All right, y'all. More and more in the comments section, I'm seeing questions asking about my tone. So today, we're going to talk about tone, and I'm going to show you how you can get a really great tone on your bass using this $350-something dollar Squire. Let's do this. Hello friends and neighbors, welcome back to The Brownstone. My name is Rich Brown. Thank you for being here. I hope you're doing very well. I had a really amazing, very busy week, um, but I'm here. And I'm here to talk to you today about tone. Uh, I get a lot of questions in the comments of, uh, asking about my tone and my signal path and the whole nine. I'm not using a whole lot. My bass is plugged into my uh, focus right Inter interface and then that goes into logic and that's it um, there there are no pedals there are no effects nothing like that it's just the sound of the bass going into the computer and that's all you hear so I thought today I would talk a little bit about tone and how I get my tone and how you can get a variety of different tones on your bass and instead of using, you know, the big, fancy, expensive basses that I have, I thought I would go back and, and dust, literally dust off this $350 Squire um, that hasn't been set up and the strings haven't been changed in forever. So this is like a uh, worst case scenario of basses. <laughs> There's a really great quote by Wayne Shorter where he talked about tone. And he said, you have to love it. You have to love it like your mother. And in my case, that's going to be a lot. Okay? I don't know about y'all, but I'm just saying. So let's talk about tone. Um, the first thing that we really need to get into is understanding what tone you're looking for. For me, I'm sort of coming out of this uh, like back pickup jocko-esque type sound because i love the definition and the warmth in that tone but i still want it to sound like a bass i don't want it to sound too high end and uh, and i don't want to i don't want to lose the low end um, for the sake of definition so how do i do that well uh you could say that i'm using a version of the old upside down smiley face in my eq setting uh, if you have a Fender style bass like this, I'll show you what I mean. So, you've got three knobs here. You've got uh, a volume control for this pickup and a volume control for this pickup. And what I like to do is turn this pickup right off and then crank this pickup full on. Sorry about the noise. That's what happens with single coil pickups. Um, but then you get this tone, you get this. You get this tone that is, is nice, but for me, especially when I get into the higher register, the attack can be a little bit brittle. So here's how I remedy that situation. And it's a simple idea that I use universally on all of my basses. And I just turn the tone right off. That tone control right down here, off. What I also tend to do is, is roll down the treble on my amp. We'll get to amp settings in a second. But um, as far as the bass is concerned, what I do is I crank the back pickup, turn off that neck pickup, uh, and then turn the treble off. Now, you can hear the difference in the tone. There I'm getting a much warmer sound, but you can really hear the difference when I get into the higher register. You don't hear that brittle attack in the notes anymore. You get a, a, a warmer sound. So if I'm playing in a group and it comes time for me to take a solo and I happen to work my way up into the higher register, the tone doesn't get more brittle as I work my way, you know, higher up on the neck. 
So that's how I take care of that situation. It makes things a lot smoother and a lot more defined, especially when I get into the high register. So for me, the simple rule is, you know, the less amount of treble I have in my tone, the better that tone is going to be. So what if you're one of these people who um, maybe doesn't like the Jocko tone as much and you might be going for more of an old school sound? Well, um, we can cover that as well. What I like to do for that situation is kind of the opposite. So I will turn on both pickups, right? So now both of these volume controls are cranked. And then I will also crank that tone control. Basically everything on the bass is on 10, right? So then what I want to do is I want to just listen. And see if I like that, if, it, if that serves my purpose. And if it does, then I leave it where it is. If it doesn't, then it's up to me to understand what part of the tone needs to be tweaked. Do you want a little bit more low end? Do you want a little bit more mid range to define the notes a, a, a bit more? Do you want a little more or a little less high end in your sound uh, to shape the attack of your tone? These are questions that you, you have to ask when you're, uh, when you're playing and when you're searching for your own sound. So, you know, one good thing to do is to set all of the controls on your amplifier to zero, right? Or, you know, at least at 12 o'clock. Uh, and then from there, you've got some, some wiggle room uh, either way as to whether you want to uh, turn things up or down uh, in any range of the sort of uh, tonal spectrum, right? More high mids, more low mids, less, whatever you want. But for me, you know, uh, if I'm going for this more sort of old school sound, then I still want that tone. I might do the same thing where I roll the treble right off just to warm up the sound a little bit. Just makes things sound a little more smooth and a little more even. And it's great when you're playing with a drummer or you're playing with a band where the high end is going to be covered by other instruments. You've got cymbals, hi-hats, all that stuff. So you can still, you know, find your spot in the mix by having a really well-defined tone that doesn't necessarily get in the way of any of the, any of the other instruments and vice versa. Nobody's getting in your way either, right? Cause that's important. You know what I'm saying? So as far as my tone is concerned, it's back pickup all the way and the treble is rolled right off. Now in the basses that I use, uh, there's a more modern modern sort of setup where I have the three band EQ built in to the bass itself. You get those three extra knobs that have like a, a, a treble, mid range and a low end built right into the bass. So what I like to do is pretty binary, right? I will crank the low end and I will crank the mid range to where they're full on. And then again, the treble control, zero, none, nada. And that gives me a pretty warm sound. So from there, I can listen and, and try to figure out what it is that needs to be tweaked. Because um, that setting, this is the interesting thing, that setting doesn't work for every uh, musical situation. So there are times when uh, I want to hear a little bit more of the low end. So I'll, I'll turn the mid range down just a little bit, maybe like 20%. Uh, and then vice versa. If there's a room that I'm playing or a situation where um, the venue is very boomy, then I'll turn down the low end of the bass, maybe 20%, 10 to 20%. So the end game is to really just have the most you know, well-defined note range uh, anywhere on the neck so that if I go high on the neck, I'm still getting this beautiful warm tone. And if I'm low on the neck, then you can easily discern through the definition of the mid range what notes I'm playing. Because if you add too much low end, 
then, you know, especially if you're playing a five string, you, you can't tell the difference between like a C and a C sharp on that low B string. That's not what you want. You want every note to be defined. And for me, I want every note to have a warmth. And for, you know, for my purposes, the treble really takes away from that and adds a brittleness to the sound that I don't dig at all. Um, but this is subjective. There are, you know, some that are really into that tone and really into hearing that, that very sharp attack that the treble provides. So it's subjective. It's up to you. What do you want from your sound? This is the question. Because if you like the sound of your own bass, then you're going to want to hear that sound more and more. Which means when you get into the practice room and you really dig that sound, you'll just end up, you know, playing for longer. You'll have longer practice sessions just because you love the sound of your bass. And the more you love the sound of the instrument that you play, the more you want to hear that sound. Um, and it also allows for you to really explore the ideas that you're working on at the time because you're hearing the sound that you want. So experimentation and, you know, exploration into different ideas becomes fun. It doesn't feel like work because you love what you hear. So these are the questions that you have to ask yourself when you are, you know, working on your own sound and trying to discover your own tone. Are you an old school player? Do you want to hear more of that low end? Do you like more of the P bass sound? I know P basses are all the rage right now. Uh, um, so do you want that sort of warmer tone or are you looking for something more of like a Jocko type style uh, where the bass is a little more uh, defined in the mid range and punchy? in its sound. Um, you can answer that question in the comments section. Which group, which category do you fall into? Old school, P bass, new school, jazz bass, something even more modern? Uh, let me know. It'd be interesting to see the split here because I know it gets pretty even when it comes to asking like, you know, P bass over jazz bass uh, or vice versa. So let me know in the comments section which category you fall into. But these, as I said, these are the questions that you have to ask yourself. Once you, once you uh, realize what category you do fall into, then, you know, maybe check out some recordings of the bass players that you really dig who, you know, portray that sound or, or exemplify that sound. And then try to emulate that on your own bass. You will find that you might not get uh, the exact sound, but then that's where the EQ settings can come into play and you can fine tune what you're hearing to suit what you want to hear. That's the main goal. This is how you come to uh, discover your own voice on the instrument through that kind of experimentation. So you know what, y'all? I think as far as a lesson goes, maybe I will leave it there and, uh, and leave the rest to you to find your desired sound. That's going to do it for me today, my friends and neighbors. Nice, short little video all about tone. And I hope that you're able to find yours and um, create the most music that you possibly can in order to become the best bass player that you can possibly be. Uh, I'm going to leave it there. Like, share, subscribe to the channel, join the channel, donate. I will leave the link in the description box below. All of the above helps me out in a huge way. And we've just hit 16,000 subscribers. Thank you. Thank you all for the support that you've given to this channel. And I'm going to leave it there, y'all. And I will see you in the next video. Peace and love.